If you're tuning in to me, if you're tuning in to me, you watching Gully TV. I'm here with a New York City legend. You a legend, period. Man. Yeah. Basketball royalty, and I've been waiting to do this forever. Skip to my motherfucking loop. Man. Who Pleasure. gave you the name? Man, the Hannibal? name. The name. No, not Hannibal. Uh, uh, Duke Tango Al Cash. No doubt. Uh, they came up with the nickname Skip to my loop one time. I was coming down the court in Rucker, and I just thought of something to get the crowd their feet, and I just. I, I kind of like put a little spin on the ball on a fast break, and I just started skipping right. with the ball. And the dude, the defender went for the ball. I just wrapped it around my dick, threw it to my teammate. He caught it and dunked. It was all in stride. <laughs> so, uh, and they were like, yo, ladies and gentlemen, we got a new nickname for him. And this gets my loose. So my first nickname was The Energizer. Got it. I was a young, young kid, maybe 13, about to turn 14 that summer. And I played in Rucker, actually, you know, Rucker, more older, right. grown men or guys that's in college or some overseas playing that always come back and play. Uh, and what happened was I was the youngest, so they would, they would sub me in. I'll come off the bench and they'll sub me in. We up about 10, 13, right. 15 points, right? And I'm just coming down, I'm going. I'm just, I'm weaving through in and out traffic, throwing dimes, diving, dropping off. And they was like, ladies and gentlemen, this, that's the Energizer Bunny. Because he keeps going, he keeps going. He goes, but that was my nickname before Skip to My Loop. Got and it. that's what just blew everybody's mind when I did the skip thing a year a year later, and it just took off like wildfire. You, your contribution to this basketball shit is just incredible. Um, I remember my first time seeing you on ESPN when they had the animal mixtape thing going, and I, I was locked up at the time. When I got to the streets, they had tangible. Video, video tapes, VHS right, right. tapes. VHS, VHS. Yeah, the VHS joints. And then adjust the tracking. <laughs> adjust the tracking, right. Um, and I'm watching this shit, I'm like, God damn. And I was done with basketball. I played basketball growing up, all through school, all of that. And right. I was done with it. I had became right. a part of the streets. Right, right. But That's once I started seeing that shit, I'm like, damn, this shit is dope. I wanted to dribble a fucking basketball again. again I mean, right, I, I right. believe it did that to everybody. Um, what type of what what type of drills were you working on, or would you what, did you develop your skills by being playing twenty one in the hood? It, it was more of a, it was a combination of everything. You know, back then there weren't a lot of guys coaching wise and that were getting us kids up to do a lot of drills. Right. I mean, it might have been one, maybe two. Okay. Right. And you had to have played with them or for them at some point. You know, but what what helped us was that the parks was enormous. The mm -hmm. run in the park was, it made you come back for more. Right. Whether you got your behind kick or whatever, you came back for more. And then when you weren't playing, you got a chance to watch the older people do their thing. Right. So a lot of the guys that are, you know, in the parks and neighbors, and especially in New York City, all over, all, main, major, major in the cities, the guys in the park was doing their thing with that ball. And right. you had a chance to sit on the side like, okay, when they get off, that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, so, so that's what helped me. Cut you off. Before you crafted all year, expertise your tricks you were seeing older guys in the hood doing some mm -hmm. that slick shit with yeah. the ball yeah. give me some names i mean these guys weren't household names at that time they yeah. were just local i call them heroes to me they were mm -hmm. my local there because i got a chance to see these guys every day in the park it wasn't until i got older when i started moving around you know playing i'm from south side jamaica queen i started playing thomas in brooklyn queens of Bronx. i started seeing what you call so-called Legend, park legends, right. playground legends, and that's when I got a chance to see Speedy. Uh, he was in the movie uh, Butter Rim. Okay. Light skin guy, Speedy Williams. I got seen, got a chance to see the dancer Doogie. He was one of the guys that's playing in Rucker. That's who I first time I ever went to Rucker to see a game. The dancer Doogie. They used to always come down the dancing one, the dancing one. He 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 had that ball in the yo yo. Right. Uh, got a chance to see those guys. Did you had a chance to hear about all the Fly Williams, Joe Ham? I got a chance to meet all these guys, right. you know, through my travels in the, in the park and everything. Uh, uh, you know, when I was young coming up in the Rucker, the guy that was young before me was uh, uh, the Future. The oh, Future was the, he Shout was the Skip to Malloy. Yeah, Shout yeah. Out to Malloy. He was the, the, the Skip to Malloy of his era. Right. You know what I'm saying? He was the young guy. I love how him. all of y'all immediately pay homage to the Future. Sham God did the same. Oh, indeed, thing. indeed, man, indeed. Like, I never went up to Rucker Park to watch games. It was only twice I actually went there to watch a game. Right. The first time was the future was playing. The second time was Dancing Doogie was on the court. Right. Uh, after that, I even went up there because I had a game. 
That's the only time. Yeah. Like, if I had a game, I went up there after that, we got back to stop Tell me Queens. about this story you know, so. I've <laughs> always heard, man, about you showing up to the game at halftime and shit like that. It's, it's a few little stories, bro. It's, I mean, <laughs> yo, it wasn't it by birthday, design. Bro? No. Okay. I never wanted to come at halftime. Right. Um, What happened was, I'm, I'm look, I, I, I was a street kid. I'm a hood kid. Every day we playing dice. You know what I mean? So we on the corner. We on the block. Playing CeeLo. Right. Everybody that's playing CeeLo is going to the game when it's time to go to the game. Right. You know how intense the dice games get. Yeah. So now you, you might have been At this time, I'm 50, 60. This is everything in life to me right, right. now. Because you know what I mean? It, I ain't got no money. My mother ain't got no money. Right. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> so this is everything in life. I'm trying to win. I'm trying to get it all. Right. Next time I turn around, everybody done took off to go to the game. I look up, we play at six o'clock. It's five fifteen. Right. In rush hour traffic in New York City. So I'm yeah. like, yo, I'm gonna get so now I gotta take a cab. You know, and back then in New York City, if you live in areas where you can flag a cab down or you gotta call it go to the cab stand. Yeah. Or call a cab. Right. So I gotta call my favorite cab driver, which is at that time was number eighty eight. So when you see Nas with the new joint, car eighty five, right. Every Every had a, that one car number. I had car 88. Gotcha. So I had to call 88 and take get me to the game. But by the time we get to tr- through travel, I'm late. Right. I get there. I put on a show. But the argument after the game with all the homies from the neighbor is like, yo, how y'all going to leave me? <laughs> y'all going to see me? And you got, how you leave the show? <laughs> so everybody uptown in Harlem thinking, Skip, keep going to come late because he want the crowd step. No. Right. I want to I wanna bust their ass from jump tip to the right. end. That's how I was. But... You know, it, I get that half, and I get them the show from half, and, and you know, everybody that knew me at that time, I'm like, I'm then there walking out the park, like apologizing to people, fans. I don't even yeah. know, like, yo, my bad. I wasn't trying to come a half. People I'm standing in line. I'm to sorry see. to give you a half show. Right. You know what I'm saying? But you know, but that's what it was, man. It was just a, it was a situation that you in the neighborhood, man. You trying to get a dollar, and for me, it was better me roll dice. Yeah. Than to really get in the field, yeah. you know what I'm saying. So it was like, you know what, the most that can happen yeah, to me, right. yeah, the most that can happen to me is two things: either they gonna give me a summons because it's only a ticket, right. or the stick up kids coming, and we all know better. <laughs> you know, you from the streets, it's better to get the money up because you can save your life. Right. You know, we can we can get this money back another later on the night. Tell me about <laughs> tell me about tell me about the basketball privilege in regards to having um, encounters with the stick up kids. Well, it it, it's, it's, it was respected, and it's understood. You know, when they see for you, me. Uh, Streets and ball, I play both sides of it. Right. Uh, you know, I always tell the kids, I I, I, I did my, my, my share of dirt out there. Um, but I realized at some point I couldn't do both. Got it. You know, I was a juvenile kid. So, I mean, I remember getting on the bus, right, taking what well, I had no business doing to... Albany, connected to Detroit. Oh, no doubt. You see what I'm yeah. saying? I had people, I, I, my brother and I, we, we go to Coatesville. Right? We going PA. to piss the PA. Yeah. You know, so we, we at a young age already in the field. South side. But what happened was, I knew this one thing could save my life. And I was nice and ball. And I said, basketball would save my life. So all the people in the streets, in the hood, they knew. Respect that. Yeah. And that was one thing that every city, I don't care if you was in Philly, D.C., yeah. They knew to respect them kids that's playing ball. Right. Leave them alone. It was respected throughout. The, it was it, it was like you know you got hidden rules in the street. You got hidden rules in life. This was a hidden rule. You, it, it didn't have to be told. It's like yo, them kids, them, them them youngsters playing ball. Leave them alone. No doubt. Today, totally different. You know what I'm saying? They you see really kids get nah, they're not really nah, respect nah. The You see kids get gunned down in the street. Yo, yeah, this, this was a prominent basketball player. Like yeah, you know what I'm saying? We got people. People was protecting us. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like. After a while, it was like, whatever's going on in the street, it was like, yo, let them go. Let them walk by. So hold on, hold on a second, y'all. Let them ball players go. Go ahead. Hey, yo, man, y'all, y'all keep doing y'all thing. Stay out of trouble. Now it's like, damn them. <laughs> I believe once it became cool to use the term savage, I hate it. It was yeah. probably birthed and promoted in music. The deterioration of, of a lot of, um, I don't know, our characters, not yeah. me. But our characters, so to speak, mm-hmm. it just became where where I, I our era was cool to be a basketball player, like super cool. A basketball, it was the loveliest thing. A basketball player was, was like thing. running neck and neck with a drug king. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, listen, I'm living proof. I'm living proof. Everyone glorified the drug kingpin. When I walk down the street and I'm 16 years old, they like, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> 
you know, all the little kids, they looked at me right. just like they looked at him. And the drug king. Pimp. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because you know why? <laughs> Remember, we all... Why the biggie, the, the biggie, the, street guys the biggie like line, the biggie line is pro because that's what I'm, so I'm alluding to. Right. We, they all had aspirations to be ball, ball play for athletes, right? So the biggie line is you either had a wicked jump shot or you sling clap. Right. It's the true statement in every inner city: Detroit, totally DC, true. LA, like totally New York, true. Philly. So that's why they look up to because yo, I they look at that as I was once you, until this side got a hold of me. Absolutely. Right? It's like you said in the beginning of your, like yesterday, in the beginning before we started. It's like, yo, I was my dream was playing ball until I went that route. No doubt. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I was gonna be that kid too. Nice, nice, could, woulda, coulda, shoulda, until I had to stop that other route. Like, yo, I chill knew out. You knew, I knew you knew some major players because I seen you on ESPN with a bucket hat on a couple times. Yeah. You, you might have had a Kango on. I come from that environment. Terry Clough joint. Yeah, I come from that environment. <laughs> I, listen, man. Surgeon to Titi track suits, right. the, the, the big time I was like, man, right. die, we, yo, let's go get that. The go Fila Valor, you know? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah when y'all were wearing it, I was, yeah. I would yeah. love, uh, like I said, I was locked up when the air went, um, yeah. when it was, when the episodes was running on ESPN. Right. I, I could always depend on you and Shane to have Shane, a, yeah, yeah. a good velour. Yeah, Shane, Shane. Some Tim's or. Shane, you know, lives, one thing about Shane, Shane, living out to the fullest, man. You know what I mean? But it's our, it's our era. It's what we come up right. in. And, you know, um, it's so weird, man. The funny thing is, doing this interview with you is like, I follow all your stuff so much. Man. And I think one of your. Uh, one of your things that you said you're going to bring out soon is, is with, is with uh, the guy Gibbs uh, in. Uh, Talking about Supreme Team Fat Cat. Bro. Oh, absolutely. So, absolutely. so at the end of the day, that's where I come right from. Right there. I, yeah. I grew up in that that area. The when projects. I started to do the research so, on, on was, the Supreme it was, Team, it was, it, was, it was incredible. And every time a basketball name would pop up, I'm like, I know him, Derek Cheevers. We play same neighborhood. Same neighborhood. <laughs> David, David Edwards, David, like, same name. like I'm, same name. so you know how I'm, I'm going to these stories, you know, looking for information on drug kingpins yeah. and street stuff and hip hop, and I'm like, it all, all crawling. Derek Chivas, I'm like, he played for Missouri. I remember him. And then you, and these guys grew up yeah. together, and some of them were related. Like it's crazy. Yeah. Well, we all, yeah, no, we, and we all idolized. So, so like Dave looked up to Derek Chivas. I looked up to Dave. Edwards. No doubt. You know what I'm saying? And then me and Dave became boy. We started hanging out every day before he passed away. That was my running mate every day. Till this day. You know what I'm saying? Because he understood. It's, it's understood. If I, even if I was a group of young men, I looked up to you. I, but after a certain time, our childhood is, is leaves us to where we're shy to tell you this. True. To the point where now we were grown men. I said, yo, Dave, man, you, <laughs> I wanted to be like you. Man. I wanted to go to Georgetown. Right. You know, There's only a couple of coaches I ever wanted to play for. And I got a chance to play for one of them. It was John you, Thompson, to meet those Lou Conaseca, and uh, uh, Jerry Tarkanian. You met all of them, though. Met all of them. No I met all of them. Uh, John Thompson did an interview with me when I was in the playoffs one time. I had to let him know before the interview started. You mean the world to us. No you mean the world to us black people because what the way you uh, was able to save all those kids from Baltimore and D.C. Yeah. and get them to come to your school and change them as young kids to men. Georgetown fan growing yeah, up? Yeah, big time. Patrick Ewing and all no that. Doubt. Patrick was my assistant coach. And I had to tell him to. That's what I said. You swallow your pride, your ego, right. your pack. Houston? Yeah, he was hit my sister coach here in Houston. And when I got traded to Lando, he's my sister coach. No and I just swallowed my prize. He used to call me Mr. New York. I said, I was like, bullshit. Bullshit. You New York. <laughs> I said, I remember drive day till this day that they called your name to the Knicks. Right. We ran in the middle of the street. People were doing cartwheels and flips yeah. because we knew that you'd probably bring us a championship. No doubt. So, no doubt. One of my favorite players. Yeah. Um, I will forever associate Patrick Ewing with an era of blackness. This yeah, is man. when families would sit down around a TV to watch the game yeah. and shit like that. And he's that. had his fair share of, of injustice along the way. Yeah, remember, he grew up in Boston. Right. We only got to go in depth about don't Boston. Have to go that there. man had to go through it. They and called he, him a and monkey. He's Jamaican. And he's Jamaican. They called him monkey. I remember yeah. he went to Villanova. It was the game. It was the biggest game of the week. Remember, the, it, maybe one or two biggest games come on because that's when the biggies started. Big Monday. Big Monday. Right. No, that's yeah. not ESPN. This is when Patrick when Patrick Union and uh, they weren't on ESPN all the time. Okay. Nah, they, the biggies had started. They never. They, they had the biggest game of the week. Gotcha. So you had to hurry and catch it. You had to make sure your TV. <laughs> you had that channel. Right. And and they played Villanova. Had Villanova. At the spectrum, and uh, they were calling them monkeys. They had signs, man. And you know, 
to, for a young man to go through that, yeah. you know what I'm saying, and, and for him to persevere and endure and to, to become a Hall of Famer through all that, it says a lot about who he is and, who Absolutely. and how he's raised. Absolutely. Let's talk sneakers, man. The nerve of you playing in some Jordans, man. <laughs> like, I, I, that's very, very, that stood out when I was watching you on tape. I'm like, this nigga right. playing in some bags. Right. That was almost a basketball curse. It's, it was, was back up. then, it was like, that was a, a, a don't do. Yeah, we didn't don't wear sneakers dare. and didn't wear yeah. his jersey never. You ever wear his jersey never in a game? No. You ever wore 20 uh, years? It was almost like a yeah. curse. Like, how yeah. dare Especially you? Especially put on some Jordans, man. Yeah. You know, um, Again, one of those situations, man, it was the rucker. You know, you gotta first of all, you gotta have some if you want a top player, you can't be walking in there with some with some with some nonsense. Right. So, I got in the car, headed to my game, got everything, my shorts. Remember back then you didn't have a full uniform, it was a t shirt. Just a shirt. With yeah. the with the number in it, right? And I'm like, yo, I ain't got my so we already on the highway. I ain't yeah. got my sneakers. My homeboy, uh Mook Diamond, uh uh, who he's the nephew of Callie Wall. Mook Diamond does, he at a point in time does the same thing that I do. He did. Yeah. Right. Okay. He was doing, I was saying Mook Diamond because now he got Hood Royalty TV. Okay, uh, yeah. He does the okay, uh, comedy and now all, he got all kinds of stuff he's doing in Queensville. But his, his uncle is Callie Wall. Got you. Right? Who's affiliated with, you know, uh, the Fat Cats and all that back yeah. then. So, uh, we riding the car. He like, yo, man, pull us, pull over. We running the sneaker store. I'm thinking, yo, let's get, let's just get a pair of uh, Air Force One, uh, some Uptowns and some right. High Tops with the strap. Like, he like, fuck that, man. You just get to my look. We going in style. Yo, let's go get, get yo. Come on, get the get the get the Jordans. <laughs> Throw them on. Put them on right now. We we running the park with the Jordans. We already late. Right. I run the park with the Jordans on, right. and I give them I give them work. You know what I'm saying? And those were my basketball shoes. I at never the time. could play in the You know what I'm saying? Either. So it was crazy because we young kids, we young at the time, and you know, he was, he's only a year older than me, gotcha. but he's act like my big brother my whole life. Like, yo, man, leave the street stuff alone. Right. He's one of the rare guys, yo, leave that street stuff alone, yo, I got this, don't worry about it. anything you need, you go to college, I'm gonna send it, woo, woo, woo. You know, I also had a pocket full of money because I was known as the uh, the dice man in the, gotcha. in the queen because I had this no fear. I had a no fear of the bet, you know what I'm saying? Right. So I had no fear, uh, you know what I mean? Like. Uh, Whatever the bet is, whatever's it like, whatever's in the bank, uh, you know, we play CeeLo, so Let's yeah, somebody it. got the bank, right? right. So when I'm like, whatever the bank, man, stop it, man. I don't care if it's three thousand, stop it, you know. <laughs> so I had no fear to bet. So they always knew where to find me, man. So you know, it didn't matter. It didn't matter what that day with spots from Jordan's go. It didn't matter what what right. how much, whatever that thing caused. But that's what we was going to get, and that's what I ran up there and ran out on that court with. Showed your ass. Um, yeah. Tell me about whose idea was it to make a tape. Skip versus Alamo. Oh, that so the Skip versus Alamo trade came back. We was all affiliated with Amon at this time. Right. Alamo got us so R P. But so it was something to to keep the the interest going. Keep them again. Keep the buzz going about M one because M one now at this point was in every was everywhere, especially every major inner city. Right. So now it was like okay, this summer was like okay, what's the buzz now? Because the, the tour was already a buzz, so what could we go? So for us in New York, it was like, yo, we got to get these two New York dudes. So it was more of a promo thing, mm -hmm. uh, as more more than us him and uh, him and I against each other. Because him and I was really we was one of the two hottest names in Rucker Park at the time. Hottest, so right. we were two guys. So we were going. We only played against each other once, maybe twice every summer in Rucker because you got the one game during the regular season, and then if we made it, if we saw each other in the playoffs, right. then that was it. And so, y'all wasn't sticking each other. Right? Not really, because yeah. uh, very so often because you know Mo is Alamo six seven, six five, right. six 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 seven around that line, and I'm six two. So we we had big big guys on my team that could that match up with him. Right. So. But then sometimes we'll we'll have a chance where we own each other, you know, because we both guards. So we'll have that time where we guard each other, man. But the beauty of that was we played against each other since we was little kids. Oh yeah. Yeah, since we was 10, 11, we played a bunch of tournaments against each other citywide, uh, each one teach one. So all you, these different you knew him when he was six two. We knew all yeah. <laughs> when, when he was five or ten. Right. You know what I'm saying? We we all grew up playing against each other, even though we all from different boroughs and different like we I played against Sham Guards since we was 10, 11, 12, Stefan, Kareem Reed, uh, Alamo, you name it, we all had to cross paths. And right. I think 
for all of us, that's what's helped our game because we knew every time we was in the tournament, we had to bring it because we were going to face, from a guard standpoint, it was no day off. Right. So, so this weekend, I can play against Stephon. Next week, I got Shannon guard. Finally, I got, so if a guard's in New York City, it was no night off. Did y'all keep man. a score? In our heads, we, we all knew. Yeah, we all knew. Score. We all knew. They, because score. I was from Queens, they thought I was trash. But then when the they, score, yeah, man. they, I would say I got the best of them more times than they have got more times than they got the best of me. Right. They know. You know what I mean, it's not it's not a shot at them because nah, I man, salute them. Nah, like nah, man, they those are my guys, man. And when they went to college, man, I was a, their biggest fans, and I wanted to see them make it right. just as much as they wanted to see me make it. Uh, me and Kareem Reed, we got a chance to play against each other. Fresno State played Arkansas, they beat us. Right. So he's got he's got that one on okay. me. Uh, Eric Harris. Y'all had was, to defend each other. Yeah, game, huh? yeah, yeah. They don't they don't have the whole game on on YouTube, but they got the clips, and you can see the clips, and you can see it. You can hear the commentators talk about it. like, man, these right. two are the pride of New York City right now out here. So it was a big time for both of us, man. No doubt. Yeah. So Alamo, he. He grew up with that handle. He had that handle the whole time. Yeah, but we all by the time it. we seen it, when you see somebody six 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 seven doing that shit, but yeah, like, it, oh, was, it was it was it was like I said, it was second nature to us, man. This is what we did all day, every day. You know, we, we would play three games in a day and then go to somebody's neighborhood and play. And then you know, we all we don't come from, we don't live in houses. I mean, New York is full of project so right. we all at least last every last one of us lived in some sort of building or tenement, and we stand in front of the tenement and just be dribbling. And we'll play these dribbling games. You know what I'm saying? Whether they in my neighborhood or we in their neighborhood. You know, I remember spending the night at Stephon Marbury house. We dribbling the ball, we could dribble the ball up the steps. You know what I'm saying? Without the ball hitting the step and going the back down. The first time I ever you seen know? that shit was on the documentary on Hollow Ground and Future was dribbling, I think, down the steps. Yeah. Like, Without the ball hitting the step and taking we, 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 we down the steps. So we, dribbling was something that we were going to do because it was every day. It was every day. You know, basketball's in your face as right. much as street life is in our face. So as soon as we come outside, we seeing the big hustlers, the hug this, that, third. When you come outside, but somebody got a ball, and you know, no doubt. And it was like, what you about to do with that thing? Let's go. <laughs> you right. know what I'm saying? That's just how it was. What did you think about Bomb Collector on, on camera? Look, hold on. Go ahead. He, you see, you did that. On camera, looked like he used to. You were irritated by his buzz. No, no. Um, it, it all, it just looked like you didn't, you didn't, you was, I think you was irritated by him, Skip, because you was the nigga doing all this slick shit, and he came along and everybody was talking about him. Bone Collector, mm -hmm. Bone Collector. You remember at this time, I was damn near, I'm on pretty much done with Rucker. Right. When Bone Collector come, I was only making spot appearances. He still had a, a, a he had a, the, the right. reputation of a, a dinosaur. Bone Collector was killing out there, right? He was killing. It, I can't be irritated with somebody doing the same thing that I've done already. Okay. It was the same thing for me. That's See, what it seemed it, like you were irritated It was the by. same thing with Future. Future wasn't irritated when I came out there and was garnered the spotlight. Right. I wasn't irritated with Bone Collector. The problem with Bone Collector, Bone Collector's not from New York. Bone Collector got with somebody from New York and allowed him to put this battery in his back that he had to be arrogant and ignorant towards some of us. Oh, so he would come through and not be speaking and shit like that? No, it was just not so much that. It was just his demeanor, his approach to a lot of us. And we're looking at him like, how dare you? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was like, that's all it was. It was nothing else. Oh, so, so we had to nip shit. that. Oh, so, basketball, yeah. so you got respect. Right. Though, right? So well, we nipped that in the bud because the guy that was putting his back, we if somebody had to go check that dude. Right. You know what I'm saying? So we had to, listen, my man, don't try to put this man against us. And the man got to get back to California. Right. So it was going to go deeper than basketball, how we allow it to be. Right. Now, as far as our games, the game is self-explanatory. Bone Collector is nice with the handle and nice with throwing between your legs. We've never seen him at that time play some real basketball. Right. So his game wasn't scary. Right. It was just, okay, he going to catch you. After a while, he, he started playing you. like real basketball. He developed a jump shot. Like, you don't... He developed what jumper? Bone is nice. So I got a chance to go to California and go in the gym and play bone. Right. And that's when I finally saw that. Oh, snap. So you really can who? Yeah. It ain't just, I got to throw between Oh, legs. okay. But at that time in Rucker, we never saw it. Right. So for me, it was like, can you, can he play? 
Because that's what people don't pass the park. You got to separate Skip to my loo from and one Skip to my loo. Right. Then Skip to my loo in New York City. And that's the part people have. People realize in New York City, no, Skip will come out here and give you 35, 40 if you, if you don't let. <laughs> or, or Skip will give you, Skip will give you trickery, sorcery. He'll wrap it around your head. He'll just, right. you know what I'm saying? So at the time, that's what it was about. It was more of, can he really play ball with us out there? Right. That's all it was. He said sorcery. That's just yeah, you know what I'm saying. Goodness. So that's what they would say. They would call me that when I'm coming. Sometimes on the mic, like he's about to get all these everything, trickery, sorcery. Yeah. And you know what I'm saying. It was they would say everything when I was playing out there, man. You know what I'm saying. They're like, oh, that skits my loot. He'll make a fool out of you. Then next day, man, hey, the skits that skits my loot. The, the bucket getter. Right. You don't know what game I'm coming with. I seen you on an, on the an one episode one time. You was like, yo, man, they don't get it. They you was like. Every city we went to, it was a killer there. It was a uh, nigga that do the same shit. Uh, was um, was would y'all go to cities and you would see a guy and be like, God damn, this nigga. Every guy. city, <laughs> every city, and that, my thing with those guys, like I said, it's respected. Yeah, we ain't the only ones doing. It. Remember, there was somebody before me. I just right. I told you, dancing, dude, speedy, all these dudes right. doing it before me. Right. What makes you think there's not gonna be some kids or some man doing it in these other places? Okay. I mean, we went to DC. We we found a kid silk. And it, huh? Andre Poole. Man, this kid was so nasty with that ball, man. I said, damn, smooth. I mean, skinny yeah. like me. Yeah. So when I had a chance to meet, him, he was like, man, everybody called me Skip around here. They thought they signed They I remind uh, them of you. Yeah. I said, nah, man, you who you are. So you silk. Yeah, Andre Poole. You nice in the mud yeah. down here, man. Word. Right, we we go to Paul and Oregon. We find a professor. Till this day, who's on YouTube with two million, five, six million views? The professor. Yes. Yeah. Respect it. Respect it. They used to hate on him. My thing was, he he turned into a freak. I'm not gonna lie. I think probably through training and drills, but, he but, just he just turned to a freak. But at that time, but that's what we did. I think the things that he that's was doing. What we did. The, the stuff that he was doing, pharmacists was, was doing. And yeah. It was dudes doing it. But it wasn't, my thing is. It was kind of like an okay. thing. You think it was an Eminem situation? That's what I'm about to say. I'm about to say. And, not, and, and we're not on no race and stuff like that because I love Fest, right? right? But we got to admit, we never seen a white kid do something like that. Then all of a sudden, we now, see Jason Williams, yeah. right? We saw Jason Williams. That's the only one, right? Okay, before that, you got to go back to Pistol Pete Maverick. Yeah. Bob Cousy. Now look how far we going back. We yeah. weren't even some of us weren't even born. Yeah. I'm born in 1976, so I wasn't even born when Pistol Pete was doing this stuff. I had to get the tapes. No doubt. You see what I'm saying? So you don't see that from that race and culture on a consistent like we see it from our culture and race. Okay. So you gotta respect it. Yeah, some it was along the lines of something, like that. but however, you gotta respect it. Mm. Then you had to respect the fact what he brings to the table. He brought a whole different fan base. Facts. So that would, and I try to help all those guys understand that. What you should do is get on board with him because he can help your fan base because he brought, he bringing 20 million pop. He's a pop star. <laughs> yeah, what I'm trying to say. Yeah. So as much as we can say, yeah, Eminem lyrics ain't really all that. That's a whole different fan base to rap right now. Yeah. You looking at a hundred million. He's a whale. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So you yeah. might, so then you got the right to look with 50 of them get on board, right? Right. Jay Z do track with him, right? Like, it ain't. This is just strategic, smart stuff, a business move. I'm fifty. I signed with Eminem. I'm going. I'm getting a hundred million white people, right, to love me. No doubt. Right. Then I'm gonna do uh, all endorsements. I'm gonna do uh, vitamin water. I'm gonna do this. Right. That's him. That's professor to this day. We should move this. Did you get yeah, yeah. Did Let you have?